Hello class, this is Professor Morrison and this is your presentation about using transitions. So there are transitions and there are transition sentences. And both of these act as bridges, connecting ideas from one paragraph to another or from one sentence to another or even sometimes inside of sentences. And transitions show the direction that a writer's thoughts are headed and serve as signals or clues to the reader that ideas are related, even if the way they are related is by being the opposite of each other, such as when we use transition words like however or although. So we use different types of transitions for different types of essays. And there are different rhetorical modes that we use in composition. And that's just a fancy way of saying essay type, like comparison and contrast, cause and effect, or argument. And when we write comparison and contrast, we use transition words and phrases like similarly, in contrast, and on the other hand. But when we're writing about cause and effect, sometimes we would use transition words like because or phrases like as a result or leading to in order to explain how our thoughts are related to each other. And when we're writing argument essays, we really need to mention the argument and also the counter argument. So signal phrases such as even though, nevertheless, and therefore may be used. There are some transitions that we can use in almost any essay, and these are addition transitions. They can show addition, introduction, or similarity. And here's a, just a nice long list, although of course there's more. So every time we use also or and, those are addition transitions. And those can be used in pretty much any kind of essay. We also have introduction and reference transitions, which can be used for many different types of essays also. So anytime you're going to introduce an illustration or an example, you would use one of these. Or when you're going to introduce some sort of lengthy analysis or reasoning, you could say, well, considering this and regarding this and with regards to this. So take a moment and look at the different transitions on the screen and think about how you might use those in your writing. We also use similarity, identification, and clarification transitions. And this might be good for comparison and contrast essays, but also we might use those in other kinds of essays. Another type of transition is the adversative transition, and this type of transition would be used to signal conflict, contradiction, concession, or dismissal. We see these often in argument, however, in contrast, and we also use them for emphasis. Some of these transitions may also be considered as concession transitions, and you can see how they might be used in different types of argument. And you can take a moment and look at the ones that are on the screen. We also have dismissal and replacement transitions. Things like in either case, or all the same, or in any event. And these might be used in terms of argument or analysis. Causal transitions are used for cause and effect and reason and result. When we do a causal analysis, we do have causes and reasons, and we also have conditions. And so this whole group of transitions fits in with that type of essay.
we also have effect, result, purpose, and consequence transitions. And this would be for cause and effect essays and maybe also for argument sometimes. Sequential transitions are very popular. These transitions are used to signal a chronological or logical sequence, and they're good for all sorts of different kinds of essays. A lot of times we might just say first, second, next, finally, secondly, um, subsequently. You can see how these could be fit into almost any different kind of essay. Our conclusions also have their own set of transitions. These are for conclusion, digression, and resumption. And so you can say to conclude, or last but not least, or by the way, or to get back to the point. Some transitions are more formal than others, and these summation transitions definitely are a little bit farther along on the formality spectrum. Consequently, it's not a word that would fit in an informal essay, but it definitely would for an argument, research, or analysis paper. Transitions can also be sentences. Sometimes we just have words or phrases, and other times we have entire sentences that connect paragraphs and keep the flow of ideas moving from one paragraph to the next. So there are different ways that you can create transition sentences. Uh, for example, you can use repetition, which does not mean just saying the same word over and over again. Uh, we should avoid that. But however, if you have a subject, a noun, being mentioned in one sentence as emphasis, and the thought is carried over from the end of one paragraph to the beginning of another, the last sentence of one paragraph and the first sentence in the next paragraph could each contain the same word in order to provide continuity of thought patterns. So here's an example of repetition. If you're writing an essay regarding the benefits of understanding geography in today's world, you may use the word geography in the last sentence of one paragraph and then use geography again in the beginning sentence of the next paragraph so that the reader knows that the subject is still geography, but the subtopic of the paragraph has moved to another angle that also relates directly to the thesis statement. So for example, you might write that geography is helpful to learn because we live in a global economy. Then you might start your next paragraph by saying, geography is also a valuable thing to know when traveling. Pronouns can also be used as transitions. And that means that we don't have to keep repeating the same noun, which can be really cumbersome for both the writer and the reader. But we want to make sure that our pronoun and the antecedent, the word that the pronoun is taking the place of, match, and that we have logical agreement in tense and number. For instance, you would not write that Stephen told Jack he needed to change the toner in the printer, as the reader would be unclear as to whose job it is to change the printer's toner. Instead, you might write that Stephen asked Jack to please change the toner in the printer. And we don't even use the pronoun he in that version of the sentence because it would just be too confusing. If you would like to use a pronoun effectively, be sure that it's used with clarity, like in this sentence. Anita invited Brad to visit the zoo on Saturday. He said yes. We know who he is, it's Brad, because we were told in the previous sentence. Notice also that he is singular because there is only one Brad mentioned. If there had been a group of people invited, the pronoun they would have been used instead. Be careful not to use they when discussing only one person, though, as that is not 
grammatically correct. Now, there have been some changes to this. We can use they if this is the pronoun that a non-binary person has chosen to uh, have as their pronoun. But that would have to be signified first. You can't just go around using they without knowing if this is the pronoun that that person would like you to use. So for instance, you would not say the musician left their sheet music behind in the practice room. Instead, you would say the musician left his or her sheet music behind in the practice room. And you don't want to exclude either gender either, so you do need to say his or her. Synonyms are also effective transition words. They are words that mean similar things but are different, such as wonderful and fantastic. So, for example, you might write that a picnic shared with friends was an enjoyable experience, and then in the next sentence you may mention that you and your friends had a fun time during the three-legged race. Both enjoyable and fun are similar enough for the reader to understand that the thought is continued in the next sentence. So, when should we add transitions in our writing? A lot of times we find out during revision that we need to add some transitions, and that's fine. Sometimes we have them in the rough draft already, or we just need to change them around. And it might be more difficult to add transitions during revision because we already have a flow of writing, but whether we write them first or include them later, we really do need to have transitions in order to provide the reader with continuity. If you have any questions about transitions or anything regarding the class, please just let me know. Thank you.